In this module, we will discuss the configuration necessary for an IP phone to connect to Asterisk. Now that we've introduced some of the configuration and architecture of Asterisk, we can apply that knowledge in a practical sense. If you haven't yet viewed the modules on configuration and architecture, we recommend you do so now. By the end of this module, you will have learned how to configure Asterisk to permit the connection from a software-based phone, or soft phone, by adding an account for that endpoint in SIP.conf. The phone we are connecting to Asterisk in this demonstration uses the SIP protocol, but the process is similar for IP phones that use other protocols. In addition to configuring Asterisk, you will also learn how to configure the soft phone so that it can connect to Asterisk and provide authentication credentials. In the next module, we will begin discussing how to configure the Asterisk dial plan to send and receive calls to this phone. Before you begin, you will need to install a soft phone program for your operating system. We will be using the XLite phone by Counterpath. Website links to the download page for the phone, as well as installation instructions and a user manual, are attached to this presentation. We will be using the Mac client for our demonstration, but the Windows and Linux versions should work similarly. Though the clients will look different, the important thing is to understand what options must be set to get the phone to function with Asterisk. We know that as a PBX, Asterisk acts as a bridge for internal users to access resources such as outside lines or other internal phones. In addition, it provides features like voicemail and conferencing. For each conversation with a person at another phone, internal or external, Asterisk will bridge the two channels, one from your phone to Asterisk and another from Asterisk to the destination. Before we can make our first call, we must set up our phone. The next several slides walk you through this process. You can repeat the process for each phone you want to use with Asterisk. We recommend setting up at least two phones so that you can place calls between them. It's not a good idea to run two soft phones on the same system, so you should set up each additional soft phone on its own system. Remember that we're using a SIP soft phone, so to start, we will edit SIP.conf and add an account for the phone. You will recall from a previous module that Asterisk can be configured by editing the .conf config files located in Etsy Asterisk. The SIP.conf file contains a general section in brackets at the top of the file, which controls settings that broadly apply to all the SIP devices that connect to the system. Device-specific settings are listed in their own uniquely labeled sections located below the general section. All of these sections are populated by options set in key-value pairs, with the equals operator separating the key and the value. We will add a section for our phone SIP account at the bottom of the file. First, we add a section heading in brackets. This is the account name. Next, we add the option Type, which we will set to Friend. This specifies that the connection permits both inbound and outbound calls. Then we set Host equals Dynamic. This setting will establish how Asterisk knows where to reach the endpoint device. It can be set dynamically or to match a specific IP address or hostname. Now we add Context equals Internal underscore Users. This sets the context in the dial plan that this phone will use. Finally, we set the secret. The secret is the account password. Let's take a moment to review what we've done thus far in more detail. The section heading is the account name or username. This is a unique label assigned by you, the asterisk administrator. This label should be easy to manage, but it should not be easy to guess. Again, make your account name unique. Weak account names are one of the most common vectors for unauthorized access or fraudulent use of a PBX. Phone-1DF5JA is an example of a strong account name. This string combines the word phone to make it clear to ourselves or other administrators the type of connection this establishes and a random string of characters. Note this is not set to the user's extension or phone number, making it much more difficult to guess. Though we usually practice what we preach, in order to make it easier to follow this training course, we have intentionally chosen weaker usernames for the phones in this course. For example, phone-1. We do not recommend that you do the same thing in a production environment. For more advice on device naming recommendations, check out the VoIP Fundamentals chapter later in this course, which has a module dedicated to this topic. The type option we've applied is Friend, which indicates that the endpoint can both send and receive calls. This is typically necessary when the connection is a phone, as is the case in our example. The other valid options are User and Peer for one-way connections to or from SIP endpoints. Users can only make calls, and peers can only receive calls. When host is set to dynamic, as in our example, 
This means the endpoint may not always connect to asterisk from the same IP address, and we'll need to register with asterisk to let asterisk know its IP address. This means asterisk can't send calls to the phone unless it's registered. Even phones set up using static IP addresses on an internal LAN often use the host equals dynamic mechanism to register to asterisk. That way, future changes to the network won't cause the phones to stop working. The host can also statically be set to an IP address or host name, in which case the phone doesn't need to register to asterisk. Asterisk already knows where to reach it. Setting context equals internal underscore users points asterisk at a context in the dial plan configured in extensions.conf. When the user dials a number on this phone, asterisk will try to match the dialed number against extensions in this context. You will remember from our configuration file overview that contexts are section headings that act as containers for extensions. An extension is a dialed string used to access services as well as endpoints and is not necessarily a phone in the traditional sense. We'll discuss extensions more in the next module. The secret is the account password which is associated with the account name. In a moment we will configure our phone with the same credentials which must match the sip.conf configuration and asterisk in order to authenticate and allow calls from the endpoint. A user of the phone won't need to know the phone's username or password but the device itself must be set up so that these fields correspond with asterisk's configuration. The configuration we have added thus far is functional, having the fundamental options necessary for authentication and call handling. But it is not a configuration we would expect to use in a real-world environment. There are many other options available in sip.conf for features like caller ID, voicemail message waiting indication, codec capabilities, security, and more. Refer to the sample sip.conf comments to learn more about these and other options. Remember that the configuration files are available in the configs subdirectory of the asterisk source. Now that asterisk has a valid configuration for your phone, you need to configure the phone to talk to asterisk. In order to do that, you need to know the IP address of your asterisk server. If you are not familiar with how to do this, please take a moment to refer to the IP address document found in the Attachments tab of this presentation. Special configuration is necessary if you want to run the soft phone and asterisk on the same system at the same time. Read the SIP underscore port attachment if this applies to you. We'll assume that you've already installed XLite but have not yet configured it. Launch the XLite program. When it loads, you may notice that the status section states no accounts are enabled. To configure and enable our SIP account, click the Account Settings link and a SIP Accounts window should open. User ID is the account name that we set earlier for our user in SIP.conf and must match exactly or this endpoint will fail to authenticate to asterisk. Domain is set to the host name or IP address of the asterisk server. The password field should match the account secret we set in SIP.conf. You may have noticed the terminology used for this and other options differs between asterisk and xlite. Variations in terminology from device to device are common. When in doubt, refer to the documentation of your device. A user's guide for the xlite client is linked from the attachments tab. Display name is a label that will be shown at the very top of the status section. Set this to your name. The authorization username is not required and the field will be left blank. We will also leave the register with domain and receive incoming calls box checked. This will tell XLite to use the registration mechanism we mentioned earlier to notify asterisk of the phone's network address so that calls can be sent to it. Finally, for the send out bound calls via radio button, ensure that the domain remains set. When done typing in your configuration, click OK, and you will see that your account is now automatically set to enabled. Assuming that you configured both sides properly and XLite and Asterisk can reach each other on the network, you will see the status section set to green. Close the preferences window and the phone will be ready to use. If instead the status section on the accounts tab of the preferences window is red, you will see a registration error message on the phone like the one seen here. It should reflect the nature of the problem, such as the request timing out, indicating the phone is unable to reach Asterisk. This might mean that the IP address for the server was set incorrectly. When encountering errors, it is best practice to check the asterisk messages log located on the file system at var log asterisk messages. By default, this log will capture any warning, error, or notice messages. You may observe these messages in real time as they are produced by connecting to the asterisk CLI. We will connect by running asterisk dash rvvv. The extra Vs will turn up output verbosity on the console. Having resolved our networking issue, 
we attempt to register again. And notice how we see asterisk perspective. In this case, a new problem comes to light, an asterisk notice message indicating a wrong password. Confirm that the secret set in sip.conf matches the password in the xlite. Now we register once more and we can see the phone is ready to send calls. By running sip show peers on the asterisk console, we can confirm that the endpoint is registered. In summary, you should now be comfortable with configuring asterisk to permit the connection of sip endpoints and configuring a sip phone to work with asterisk. You also got to see a little bit of sip troubleshooting. In the next module, we will actually make a phone call. We will discuss the fundamentals necessary to create our first dial plan extension as we continue to build upon our knowledge and have a bit more fun.